Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Dominique from the Clayton County Library System, and we are in our second part for the C Library uh, series, um, which is going to be launched. We're launching our C Library, uh, our C Library this month, um, next week. So today we have Ansel, and she is going to be talking about soil health. Um, we do ask that everyone um, hold off on asking questions until the end of the presentation. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Hey, good afternoon. The topic today is soil. In the topic today is soil in collaboration with the, the library. And I am from the Clayton County Extension Office, a Master Garden volunteer. Soil is a complex resource which takes centuries to form. And in this session, we will review the fundamentals of healthy soil and home gardens. There's a popular quote by a professional gardener that states, soil is a living dynamic system that is fragile and perishable. In Georgia, we live in the Clayton County area, which is the Piedmont region of Georgia. Soil is weathered and mostly clay. And I have a sample of it right here. You can see how unproductive it looks. It's very compact. It has poor structure. It's hard to work. It's acidic. It lacks good aeration and oxygen. It's either too wet or too dry. It's a gardener's problem. The next slide. This is a magnificent horticultural sculpture featured at the Atlanta Botanical Gardens. It's inspired by the Native American belief that the earth provides vegetation, water, and natural habitat to all forms of life, the basis of which is soil. Next slide. Soil is the upper layer of earth. It's a living biological system. Its complexity involves interactions with plants and living organisms. It's part water, air, mineral, very little hummus, or organic matter. The secret of good soil is adding organic matter. The next one. Good soil has good soil has a living habitat below ground, consisting of anything that squirms, wriggles, or crawls. It includes billions of bacteria and fungi some beneficial, some neutral, and some harm harmful. It's all, it also includes countless insects and earthworms, all organic matter that lives, dies, and has a symbiotic relationship with plants. This life form loosens the soil, retains water, releases nutrients and minerals for plants. Okay. Our soil texture. We have different three different types of components of soil. Usually clay, sand, or loam, and silt. This diagram just describes the different combinations that are available. Loam is ideal and is usually found in uh, Tipton, Georgia, where the farmers have fertile soil. Sandy soil is more available in this coastal region, region of Georgia. Next one. Okay, this is just a description of the soil profile. If you can imagine that the covering is cut across, and the cover crops are there to protect the soil, the organic layer, provide extra um, nutrients to the soil. And the lower layers 
are O is usually the organic area, A is the top soil, which is about six inches. B contains some roots spreading toward the uh, water and nutrients. C is about 30 centimeters deep or 30 inches deep, and it usually has either sediment or rocks. Experts recommend that to avoid disturbing the horizons below level A, deep plowing, digging, rotor tilling, and extreme weather conditions cause upper layer loss. As gardeners, managing and caring for the soil is just as important as caring for plants. The next one. <clears throat> In this forest, fallen leaves, rotting trees, trunk, rotting tree trunks, and other types of organic matter creates layers of dead stuff, a form of compost or cover crops. This massive area of organic topsoil represents a life cycle. In years to come, new trees and plants will regenerate itself. In home gardens, a similar practice requires biodiversity, planting cover crops like alfalfa, buckwheat, or clover, rotating crops to prevent, to prevent um, the soil being um, losing all the nutrients that are needed, growing legumes and beans and peas and rich nitrogen with rich nitrogen, mulching and composting. These practices also insulates the soil from harsh weather conditions. Okay, next one. Soil structure. Soil particles clump together best with humus or organic matter derived from compost, nitrogen rich cover crops. This practice sustains the soil helps and supports healthy plants. Compaction is reduced when soil is not stirred, where air pockets can help the roots thrive. Next one. Okay, this video, this video illustrates the benefits of good soil. The organic amendment, the organic amendment compost, the hummus, makes the soil rich and black. Its texture structure is soft and friable. There's no compaction. The roots are able to spread toward water and nutrients. The microbes serve to Strengthen the roots. It's not working. The soil is able to retain water during drought. The roots are strong enough to anchor and stabilize growing plants. Good mulching cover crops support the plant. Best of all, this plant requires little fungicide or insecticide treatment. This plant is less susceptible to pests and diseases and will attract beneficial insects and pollinators. Okay. Okay. This is a busy slide, but it, it represents the pH of the soil. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, etc., are all the examples of nutrients that's available. Your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are your macronutrients. The others are trace minerals. The pH can range from zero to 14 in this case. You have heard of the phrase, 
up, down, all around. Up refers to the nitrogen, which helps the plants sprout and grow healthy foliage. Down refers to the phosphorus. It makes the flowers bloom, ensures healthy roots, and increase fruit development. Potassium builds overall plant health, especially cell walls needed for photosynthesis. The micronutrients are available in a smaller amount. Beneficial organisms survive best in a neutral pH, and that is between six and seven. Most plants prefer a pH between six and seven. Next one. Compost is the most inexpensive, perfect fertilizer that gardeners can use. It adds nutrients, organic matter, and biological life to the soil. Billions of microscopic fungi and bacteria, earthworms, earthworms and other organic matter decompose leaves, twigs, coffee grinds, vegetable scraps, and grass clippings. The mixture literally cooks itself over time. The process yields hummus, which improves soil aeration, drainage, water, and retention. Next one. Again, this is the pH scale. It measures the acidity or alkalinity of the soil. A neutral pH is best. However, some acidic loading plants like hydrogen, um, your hydrangeas, blueberries, camellias, azaleas, or rhododendrons prefer an acid pH. And if you do not know what to do, a soil test is required. And actually, this doesn't show when the alkaline can increase to about 14. Okay, the next one. Okay. We mentioned getting a soil test for gardeners that don't, that are not sure what to do about their garden. Get instructions from the UGA Extension Office. The telephone number is 770-473-5434. Our Clay County Extension Office is located at 1262 Government Circle in Jonesboro, or you can just call 1-800-ASK-UGA. Or you can just check the UGA website as well. Gardeners will bring the soil samples in, and they'll be shipped to the, the plant and water lab in Athens. The cost of a soil test is ten dollars. I have a little case study here that was actually done by one of our Clayton County residents. She brought in her soil sample for her vegetable garden. The previous side. Her sample was received at the uh, UGA office in Athens on the 27th. The sample <laughs> the analysis was completed on the 29th, and the printout was made on the 29th. And e uh, printout is also an email to, to the residents. In this particular case, not, this is just the, this is not the actual case that we're talking about. But in her particular case, she needed phosphorus, she needed potassium, calcium was adequate, magnesium was adequate, zinc was adequate. Her pH was 6.1, which is adequate. The recommendations, which 
as shown in the lower area. And this is from the soil lab in Athens. And in her particular case, she was to add 10 pounds of 10, 10, 10 per 100 linear row. If she was planting cucumbers, peas, peppers, potatoes, or tomatoes, or squash, 10 pounds was added. If, if she was planting plants that required higher degrees of, of 10, 10, 10, for example, her cabbage, weeds, uh, uh, kale, mustard, turnip, and collards, she was to add 50% more. If she were planting southern peas, the application would have been reduced by 50%. <clears throat> If she needed any further assistance, all she had to do was to call the Formative Extension Office. Next slide. <clears throat> These are just a few of the, of the market amendments. 10 10 10 is a balanced, um, balanced all purpose fertilizer. The manures are either cow manure or chicken manure. They're usually animal manures. Soil acidifiers are required if you need lower pH for your hydrangeas, camellias, and those types of plants. Lime is required, it's not represented here, but lime is required to increase the, the pH and make it more alkaline. 10, 10, 10 represents 10% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, and 10% potassium. Any one of those nutrients can, can be adjusted as needed. So you can have, for example, a 10, 14 combination, 10, 14, 10, or 2, 2, 2, something similar to that. The slow release fertilizers are less harmful to the soil, and uh, to the earthworms as well. Blood meal, cotton seed meal, bone meal, fish emulsions, uh, other additives that you might see on the, on the shelf. If you have any questions regarding what type of fertilizer to use, for example, organic fertilizer versus a synthetic fertilizer. The organic fertilizers contain trace minerals, the synthetic fertilizers do not. Synthetic fertilizers are primary nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and can harm soil microbes, earthworms, and even burn the plant roots. If you are unsure about which fertilizer to use, just call the extension office. Okay, we got the summary now. Okay. Good management practices improve soil health because soil is a living dynamic system that is fragile and perishable. Use cover crops, mulch. A list of the cover crops will be available on the UGA website under publications. The second management that should be done, do not disturb the soil and avoid, comp avoid compaction. This prevents erosion of the thin horizon layers where all the organic matter rests. And three, maintain a biodiversity and ecosystem. Rotate your plants. Avoid planting the same crop or flowers season after season in the same area. Always apply compost. And the last thing you can do is to get your soil tested. And you can call the UGA Extension Office, which the price of the test is just $10. Okay. We have some references here that you may be interested in. 
<clears throat> the new Gardner's handbook is available at the Public Library here in Fayette County. Very resourceful book. Unlock the Secrets of the Soil is a reference that you can get from the United States Department of Agriculture. And their website is www.nrcs.usda.gov. Unlock the Secrets of the Soil. Another reference that usually talks about saving the earth and the planet is called Gardening for the Earth. So if there are any questions, we'll happy to address some of them. Okay, we have a question that states, when is the seed library available for seeds? Ms. Oliver is the person that's at the library at the headquarters location, and she's working very diligently at creating the seed library. And we are not sure when it will be available, but we know it will be available within the next month. Oh, here's Ms. Oliver right now. Okay, someone was asking a question. You guys are obviously can't really hear on your end. Don't know what's going on. The question was Miss Moore is asking a question. She's still there. Miss Betty, do you still have your uh, question? You can go okay. ahead and ask. Okay, all right then. My question is in regards to the um, fertilizer. Now, I did take a screenshot of all of the different types of uh, fertilizer that you were showing, but is this good for, um, you know, just regular yards or is, are we talking about just plants or what? I mean, uh, garden plants. Can you repeat that question? I said in regards to the fertilizers that you were talking about. Um. The, are, are these fertilizers for, um, you know, just plants, uh, like garden plants, flowers, and that kind of thing? Or is that good for yards as well, for grass? Okay, the fertilizer that I was talking about is basically for the, the fertilizer being the plant, basically. But okay. if you use compost, and other and other other organic matter shouldn't be fertilizer at all. Oh, and you have to be very careful with fertilizers because they will, especially the uh, commercial fertilizer, the synthetic synthetic fertilizers, they will actually harm the plant, harm your soil. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes. So yes. I think so. to so, read the instructions. Okay, so it's, it's best to use the organic. Is there any, anything else you ask in, in relationship to that question? Uh, well, yes, I've said, um, so the, um, it's best to use the organic fertilizer for, uh, for your plants, for your, um, you know, your garden plants? Preferably. Okay. Preferably. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes, I put mine in the chat, but you mentioned something about uh, hydrangeas and the type of soil and thing care that was needed for it. Could you just repeat that? Yes, hydrangeas, your camellias, azaleas, rhododendrons. They prefer they. <laughs> I'm talking to. They prefer acid soil. So if you're not sure whether your soil is acidic, neutral, or high in alkaline, you would have to have a soil test. Those plants prefer acid soils. And that's the pH below seven in the five or six range. And that is in particular, if you're growing uh, blueberries, 
Okay. So what the acid sun? pH is preferable for those plants. Does it need a lot of sun? Does it need a lot of sun? Leo. Does it need a lot of sun? Of course. Okay. Of course. Thank you. It depends. Uh, it depends. Some hydrangeas prefer shade. Some are sun loving. Some are shade loving. So it really depends on your on your plant. The rhododendrons also prefer the same conditions that most hydrangeas prefer. And the azaleas, they're making so many new cultivars now that some prefer sun or you can also prefer, they can also uh, tolerate shade. But blueberries you would have in the sun. Is there another Thank question? You. Well, thank you for very, very much. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call the extension office.